If you're buying a house, the chances are you'll be getting a mortgage to do it, unless you're paying cash. It can feel overwhelming to go through the process, especially when it's your first time or if it's been a while since the last time you applied for a mortgage. But don't worry, if you have the right information and understanding before you get started, the process won't be so bad. In this video, I'm going to go over the 10 things you need to know before getting a mortgage. Number one, mortgage pre-qualification and mortgage pre-approval aren't the same thing. Now, these two things are often confused. And basically, I'm going to explain it to you so you can understand the difference. A pre-qualification is just an estimate of how much you might be able to borrow. It's your lender just either maybe they you filled out a form online and you said, I make this much, I have this much debt, and my credit score is excellent, good, or whatever. And they'll come back and say, okay, based on what you've told us, which isn't much, I'll tell you that just you telling them that isn't much. They'll say you can borrow most likely this amount of money. However, with a pre-qualification, there's no verification process. They haven't looked at your actual file. They haven't verified your employment or pulled your credit report or looked at your tax returns. That's a pre-qualification. It's a good place to start. It gives you a general idea, but you definitely shouldn't stop there if you're serious about buying a house. You need to move on to the pre-approval stage. A pre-approval is when a lender is going to actually review the documents that you give them. You're going to give them your pay stubs, your tax returns, um, access to your credit report so they can look at your debt to income and see what other things you owe. And with that information, they can give you a better idea of the loan amount that you would qualify for and of the approximate interest rate that you would get. But it's still no guarantee. However, if you go to a really, really good and experienced lender, the chances are pretty good that they're going to get it right or pretty close. So that's the difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval. Number two is, do you really need 20% down? Well, yes and no. 20% is sort of the standard that's recommended that you have as your down payment. It will help you to not pay as much in the long run. You'll get a better interest rate. You won't have to pay mortgage insurance, um, things like that. And it'll keep your payment down. But there are some programs that require far less than 20% that you should keep in mind. Mortgage insurance costs on a conventional loan can be high. Roughly, the calculation is 1% of the outstanding mortgage per year. So it can really add up to a significant amount of money, especially in a higher cost of living area. If you do buy with less than 20% down and you are required to carry private mortgage insurance, you can have it removed once you reach a 20% equity from the original loan, if it's a conventional mortgage. One thing you might not realize is that lower down payment can also mean higher interest rates. So you need to weigh your options. Number three, don't forget about the mortgage fees. Mortgage fees need to be factored in. There's more to consider than just the down payment. You could have loan origination fees, appraisal fees, title fees, insurance due at closing, closing costs, and more. Make sure you ask your lender and the title company for a breakdown of these fees so that you're not caught off guard and you don't have enough money when it comes time to closing. Number four, the higher your credit score, the better. Credit score really, really matters. Now, generally speaking, if your credit score is under 620, you might not be able to get a loan at all. So work on getting it higher. The higher your score, the better your rate. And that means the lower your payment or the more house you can buy. So if you have any issues with your credit, start right now by working to make your credit better. Number five, lenders value job stability. Stable long-term jobs really matter. So right before you're going to apply for a mortgage, don't change jobs. Don't do that before getting into a mortgage. It can really, really impact whether you qualify for that mortgage or not. So new job, you might want to wait a year or two before you can get a house. So if you're thinking about changing your job, but you really want to buy the house, buy the house first. Number six, mortgage payments must fit your budget. Your lender is going to look to make sure that the mortgage you're applying for fits into your budget. Now you might be thinking, I don't have a budget. I don't follow a budget. Well, you might not have a budget, but your lender, they have a budget in mind that they want you to follow. And if you do not meet that with the mortgage you're applying for, they're not going to approve your loan. Number seven, there are many different mortgage options available. The most standard that we hear about a lot are 30 year fixed mortgage. So that means that for 30 years, at you'll have a fixed interest rate. So that means your payment's always going to stay the same. 
But there are other mortgages too. If you can afford it, you can get a lower number of years. You can do a 20 year mortgage or a 15 year mortgage or a 10 year mortgage. You can also do a variable rate mortgage. Those typically have a lower interest rate, but they run the risk that every year they could increase the interest rates depending on what's going on in the market. So if it's a variable interest rate that you're getting, just be aware that it could change and your payment could go up and you want to make sure that you have enough room in your budget in case that were to happen. Number eight, mortgages require a lot of paperwork. So when you apply for a mortgage, get your paperwork organized ahead of time. You're going to want at least two months worth of pay stubs, two years of tax returns, maybe two months of bank accounts. And if you have any large deposits or large withdrawals going in and out of your bank accounts, your lender will probably ask you to let them know what it is. Sometimes you have to sign a little note saying what you use that money you withdrew for, or if you have a big deposit going in, that's maybe a cash, they're going to want to know where that money came from. So be prepared. Number nine, mortgage offers can help you save money. Special mortgage offers can sometimes save you money. The state or the federal government might offer first time home buyer programs, fixer upper loans. There could be programs for VA loans. So it's important to ask when, when you're talking to your lender, if there are any programs that you might qualify that could save you money in buying a home. And number 10, you should avoid making any financial changes until your mortgage is finalized. That means until the keys are in your hand and your real estate agent tells you the home is yours. So don't buy any new furniture. Don't get any new credit cards. No buying a new car. Don't co-sign a loan for anyone. Basically don't do anything out of the ordinary that's going to send up a red flag to your lender until those keys to that house are in your hand and the deed has been recorded. I hope this video helped you prepare to get your new mortgage and for buying your new home. For more information on home buying, be sure to watch this video next. And if you need a real estate agent, give me a call. I can help. All my contact information is in the description below and I will see you in the next video.